We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air. On the 8th of June 1942, the Japanese submarine I-21 cut a menacing figure as she steamed along the New South Wales coast towards Newcastle. Six months earlier, she'd been involved in the attack on Pearl Harbour and just a week earlier had supported the midget submarine raids in Sydney. Her new orders were to attack Newcastle. But despite what many people thought, crippling the BHP steelworks wasn't her main objective. You've got to remember, everyone was scared and at this time, Japan shelled Newcastle, shelled Sydney, and they said, we can bring the war to wherever you want. We can bring it right to your doorstep. And that's what they were doing. It was a, a case of breaking morale, scaring the people, saying, if we do want to come back, we will come back. And that's what they were all about. Many people mistakenly believed that it was a Japanese midget submarine that attacked Newcastle, similar to the ones that had launched raids on Sydney Harbour a week earlier, killing 21 sailors. But this was no midget. She was a mothership as long as a football field and with a crew of 94 men. She could launch and retrieve a small seaplane or be fitted with midget subs. The B-1 class was armed with 17 torpedoes and carried a five and a half inch deck gun. Now that's almost as powerful as the Scratchley guns which were about to fire back at her. She was designed to sneak within range and then destroy her land-based target with armour-piercing shells. And that's exactly what she tried to do to Newcastle. At quarter past two in the morning from a position in Stockton Bight, she launched her attack. Late ex-sergeant Jim Cannon was on duty. We took post on the gun. It was quite obvious what was happening then because there were star shells in the air. Newcastle was lit up like Luna Park. And we had to wait for order from the observation post from Captain Wally Watson as to what we were going to do about it and what the target was. Captain Watson had just got to sleep in his pyjamas when the attack began. He sprung up, pulled on his coat and headed for the guns. And by the time he got up here and you realised we were under attack, it was too late for him to run down and get, get in his uniform. But he did give the order to fire in his pyjamas with a grey coat on and he reckons he's the only officer ever to give the order to fire in his pyjamas. And for about five or six seconds you could see the Japanese crew working previously on the gun and the next thing, bang, that shell came in. It came in, the turbulence from it that landed in Parnell Place took my giggle out off and, and pulled it off my head. That shell exploded in front of a house, shrapnel narrowly missing the frightened family inside. With the fort's return fire getting closer, Commander Matsura Kanji dived his sub and escaped. She had fired more than 30 rounds at the city in 16 minutes. The Japanese shells landed all over Newcastle but caused little damage. Some of the shells are now prized souvenirs of that dramatic night. In the months ahead, the I-21 kept hunting along our coast, sinking several ships, including the BHP iron ore carrier Iron Knight, with the loss of 36 men. But in November the following year, 1943, I-21 and her crew would meet their own fate. The sub was depth charged by two US destroyers northeast of Papua New Guinea all on board were lost. It was the end of a thrilling wartime story that began in Newcastle 70 years ago today.